Okay, to get you guys ready for your performance task, I'm going to do some approximations for pi. You're going to do approximations for e um, on your performance task, but um, I'll go ahead and do the approximation for pi. So, uh, if I want to approximate pi as a whole number, I could just say, well, it's uh, pi is between 3 and 4. Um, so maybe th it's closer to 3 than it is to 4, so maybe 3 would be an approximation. Uh, approximation of pi as an integer, well, it's the same thing, right? Between 3 and 4. Uh, so let's use 3. Okay, rational numbers. So um, how accurate do I want it to be? If I write it as a decimal, I could say 3.14, and then this 0.14 I could put it as uh, 14 over 100 and then if I wanted to make this uh, so 3 times 100 is 300 so 314 over 100 and then I could reduce that fraction divide by 2 so this would be 50 um, 314 divided by 2 157, and I don't think that reduces anymore because this uh, has 5, 5, and 2 as factors, but none of those go into that. So 157 over 50 is uh, one way I could do it. Um, Archimedes used uh, 22 sevenths. Let me just show you that uh, that is approximately pi. Yeah. So how about um, 7 goes into 22, how many times? Oh, no, I did the wrong way. Uh, no, I did the right way. Okay, so 7 goes into 22 three times, which is 21. And this is maybe one way you can think about it is what's a number that's three times as big and a little bit more, right? So 3 times 7 is 21, subtract to get a 1. So I'm going to put my decimals going out. Uh, subtracting it a 1 and then bring down the 0. So this is 7 goes into 10 one time. One time 7 is 7. Subtract to get a 3. Bring down the 0. 7 goes into 34 times, which is 28. And we could go on and on. Uh, this will be 2 now. So. That's where it goes off, right? Because it, it was 3.1415. Uh, so, right there is where it goes to be uh, different. So, 20 minus 14 is 6. And I'll just do the last one here. So, 7 goes into 68 times. And actually, this is my 142857. Uh, sevenths follow this interesting pattern of. Um, Four, two, eight, five, seven, and one seventh. So three and one seventh. It would go one, four, two, eight, five, seven, and back to one. Uh, if I wanted to do two sevenths, it starts at the second highest number. So two sevenths as a fraction would be point two eight five seven. One four, and then it repeats, and three sevenths would start at four. That's the third highest number. Three sevenths is point four two eight five seven one, and then it repeats. So uh, that's kind of the interesting uh, quality of sevenths and how uh, that one four two eight five seven repeats itself. Um, but that, that's the approximation of pi as 22 sevenths so would be 3.142857. Okay, uh, irrational numbers. So, and actually, I can I can put this as 3 3.14 is actually smaller, right, than pi, and 22 sevenths. Uh, was actually bigger than pi, right? Because it was 3.142 instead of 141. So I 
well, let me use my original fraction. So here I'm putting it between two numbers. 157 over 50 is a little bit smaller than pi, and 22 sevenths is a little bit bigger than pi. So uh, that's my approximation. Okay, irrational number. How about, well, square? it's between square root of 9 and square root of 16, right? Square root of 9 is 3. So uh, is there a number, is there a square root that's a little bit closer, right? So let's try um, square root of 10, right? Because it's, it's a little bit more than 3. So let's try square root of 10. Uh, so what two numbers do I multiply together to get 10? Let's try uh, 3.1. That's 1, 3, 0, 3, 9. So it's 9.61. Uh, let's try 3.2. 4, 6. Oh, I don't even know. 6, uh, let's read 9, so 4, 12, and 10, so 10.2, so 3.2 is too big for a square root of 10, 3.1 is too small, so it's between 3.1 and 3.2, which is kind of what we want, so it looks like it's going to be really, really close, um, yeah, but 3.2 is not quite 11 yet, so the square root of 11 would be bigger than pi, right? I could deduce that because I have to get a bigger number to get over 11. So, um, oh, but it could be, square root of 10 could be, let me put this on the number line, so 3.1415, and we know the square root of 11 is higher than 3.2 but do I, I want to figure out is the square root of 10 bigger than 3.145 or less than 3.1415 uh, let's just use my calculator here so square root of 10 3.1415 3 so it's slightly bigger so the square root of 9, it's between the square root of 9, because square root of 10 is over here. So 3.1415 is between the square root of 9 and the square root of 10. So maybe I would use that. Square root of 9 less than pi, which is less than the square root of 10. Okay, so there's my different approximations so far. All right, uh, now, repeating decimal. Well, I already did a repeating decimal with a uh, 22 sevenths, but I want to do something more interesting. How about, how about I do um, this, where it's repeating those four digits. This will be a little bit more interesting. And when you get to uh, E, E is 2.71828, and then the 1828 repeats itself two times and then it changes, right? So if you can write it as that, that's a really good approximation. So um, let's say that equals x, right? And now when I want to solve for x, I could do the subtracting equations method that we did earlier in this credit. Um, so if I multiply, let's see, how many things are repeating, 4, so I'm going to multiply by uh, 1 with 4 zeros, so that's 10,000. So 10,000x equals, and I'm going to move 3, 1, 4, 1, 5, 9, and then, so I'm moving the decimal over 4 spots, so it's going to be right there, and then I repeat 1, 4, right, 1, 2, 3, Two, three, four. All right, so it's the decimal there. Is that what I want to do? No, I 
want to be able to four one. Oh, then it's yeah, then it repeats. So then it's four. Yeah, four one five nine. So this is the part that's repeating. Four one five nine. It, re it repeats itself. It doesn't go back to one right there. Okay, so I think I have that right. Now I'm going to, and then this four one five nine repeats itself. Okay, so I'm going to subtract uh, my original equation. 3.14159, and all those repeat itself. So when I subtract these two equations, this minus this would be 9,999x's. All of these cancel out with all those, and then I have 9 minus 1 is 8. Point. 5 minus 3 is 2, and then the rest just come down. Okay, and then I don't want a decimal, I want to have an integer, so I would multiply everything here by 10. So 3, 1, 4, 1, 2, 8 equals 9, 9, 9, 9, 0. multiplying by 10, just add the 0. And then I divide both sides by that number. Have my fraction. So this is a really pretty accurate uh, fractional approximation for pi. And I could simplify this, right? Divide both by 2. And I'm just going to use a calculator so I don't uh, take up too much time. So 3141512. 8 divided by 2, 157.064 over 9990 divided by 2, 49.995, and let's see, could it simplify further? I don't really know, but I am not going to go further than that. <laughs> so. This isn't divisible by 5. If this was a 5, I would go definitely go further. And this is not divisible by 2, so... But if it was, I would, I would go further. Um, now, I want to talk about this last thing, is infinite series. And we give you the infinite series for, uh, for E. And infinite series is... It, it's kind of uh, something in math uh, that you do much later on, but it's kind of fun to... Uh, to put them together and get approximations for things. Now, uh, there's people that actually prove that if this pattern repeats itself onto infinity, this would be exactly the same value as pi. Or this, if this pattern repeated itself to infinity, it would be exactly the same value as pi squared over 6. Um, and then there's approximations for E and everything like that. Even our, our friend uh, Ramanujan, the guy from India, he had some uh, approximations for pi using infinite series that are um, pretty interesting. But uh, this one, so what it was this is 3 plus 4 divided by 2 times 3 times 4, 2 times 3 times 4. This is 12 times 2 is 24. So 3, so the first term, so the first term of this pi approximation would just be 3. The second term of the approximation would be 3 plus 4 24ths, which is 1 6th, isn't it? Yeah, 3 plus 1 6th, which is 3 and 1 6th, or uh, I know as a decimal would be 3.16 repeating. So that's pretty close already, you see. And then the third term would be that 3.16 repeating plus, or no, minus. So the signs start alternating. It's plus, it's minus, plus, minus, and it's going to be minus here. And then it repeats back and forth. Uh, so I'm going to take away 4 over five, 4 times 5 times 6. So 20 times 6. Uh, 20 times 6 is 120. Um, so what is that? 4 divided by 20? 120? Point zero zero, or, so have three point one six continuous minus point zero three continuous, and I get 
approximately 3.133 uh, repeating, right? And then the fourth term, and uh, you'll probably go up to a few terms here, but what is, so I take this 3.133 continuous plus 4, and then this is 56 times 6, what's 56 times 6? So you can see that it gets to be a smaller and smaller fraction. 336, so 4 divided by 336 oops, is 0.119904. Okay, so let's just try that. 3.13s plus 0 0.0. And there you can see I'm getting pretty close already. 3.1452. And that's as far as I want to go. So you can see that this infinite series would add up to uh, pi if you went out to infinity. And this is kind of a neat one that uh, pi squared over 6 equals this interesting, you know, all it is is a fraction over the square. And how does this relate to circles, right? That's an interesting question. <laughs> Nobody really knows. Uh, well, maybe somebody does, but I don't. <laughs> so anyway, that's a little bit uh, to help you get started about doing your project. Uh, your performance tasks will be uh, doing a similar kind of thing, making it into a poster, but using approximations for E instead of pi. So hopefully you got uh, a little bit of information here that will help you get started on doing those approximations.